What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next we are going to unbox this awesome rare book. We're going to talk about a run of issues related to it that I've been trying to put together, so stay tuned. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So, in this video, I'm only unboxing a single book. Uh, it is a raw book and so I, I do like to open these ones up as soon as I get them. I don't really like to wait uh, because like I've mentioned in other videos, uh, with graded books at least you have you know some, some level of confidence with what you're getting. You know, you know what you're getting with that book. But with raw books it really is good to take a look at them uh, yourself and evaluate to make sure that there's no color touch, that it's the grade you expect, all of that. And, uh, and so that's why I'm always especially cautious with the raw books. Doesn't matter who you're buying them from. I've talked about this before. It doesn't matter who it is. No matter how much you, you trust that person, everybody is capable of mistakes. Everybody can miss things. And so it's just good to do your own work on that book and, and check for yourself. Now, uh, this book is from a very famous um, uh, artist named Frank Frazetta. Uh, if you haven't heard of him, uh, I definitely recommend going and checking out some of his work. It's just, it is some of the most incredible artwork that is out there, um, especially from his, uh, his Golden Age work as well as work he did in the Silver Age. Uh, he has a lot of uh, kind of more, I would call it like fantasy type work uh, that he's done. There's some sci-fi related work, but it's all just, it's incredible. Uh, and so, this, and I just want to make sure I don't <laughs> accidentally nick this book. Not that it would matter much because this one is extremely low grade, but uh, this, is a, this is a rare book, and this is something that I thought it would be kind of fun to show because it really wasn't all that expensive, and so it's one of those things where the, the book, in my mind, is, is worth quite a bit, but if you keep your eyes open, you know, you look for those, those, those auctions, you look for those deals, you can, you can find some good deals on these books. Uh, even for things that can be really pricey and uh, really tough to get. It just takes time and some patience and you can definitely find all those books. Now, uh, I don't wanna, there we go. All right, just wanna get this piece of tape off of here. And I will definitely take a, a look at this one. It said it was complete, all of that, but uh, I still want to, want to check and you know do the page count and everything myself. And if you haven't seen my, my prior video where I talked about things like page counts, all of that, uh, I will plug in a picture up over here uh, a little bit later in the video after I show, show the book. Um, and I'll go through the page count and all of that just to, to make sure everything is there. But, uh, so here is the book, and this is Famous Funnies number 212. And this is a Frank Frazetta cover. You can see you've got these... Uh, really cool aliens with these flying saucer type spaceships on the cover. And you've got Buck Rogers there going out to save this woman that's been tossed out into space, but they can breathe in space for whatever reason that is. I've, I've never quite figured that one out. But this is just an incredible run of books. And it goes from issues 209 to 216. Uh, because before this, it's kind of like a kid's cartoon type book. <laughs> you know, like the, the famous Funnies run really, really changed uh, when Frazetta did the did the art for these. Um, now, like I said, I am putting together the run of, of these books, or at least a number of the issues that I really like. There are a couple that I'm indifferent on that I that I don't really uh, really care so much if I get, but these are the books that I, I have from that run. And the first one here is issue 209 which uh, this is the first issue in that run of Famous Funnies. This is actually a really nice grade, a nice copy. This is a 5.5 five, uh, that I picked up from, I think it, I mentioned them before, it was Buzzard Brothers uh, on Instagram, and they were selling this on one of their, uh, their claim sales that they did through Elite Comics 11, and I ended up claiming this book and was very happy, uh, happy to do it. Um, so this is the first one you can see. This one's kind of like, you know, it's a little bit of sci-fi, he's got the ray gun or whatever, but a little bit more of the, the fantasy type stuff with these goblin guys coming after them. And they usually have some type of, you know, woman on the cover that, that he's saving. Um, then 
Now, the issue, one of the issues I don't have that I'd really like to get is issue 210, and I will throw that one up here. It's kind of like an underwater cover, and I think that that's a really cool cover. I would, I'd really like to get that one. Uh, but just haven't, haven't found the right copy for the right price yet. I mean, they can get really, really expensive. Um, now, I did already have a copy of 212. I have a little bit nicer one. This is a 25. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, so tape on the interior cover, but this one definitely looks uh, sharper than, than this other one that I picked up, but I, I couldn't turn this one down when I saw it come up for sale. Uh, so I have issue 212, and I guess you can see everything a little clearer on here, you know, so there's not as much color rub and everything on this one. And then this is my, my favorite issue from the run. Now, another one that I don't have is issue 213, which I would say is probably like my second favorite issue from the run. I'll put a picture of that one up there too. It was just awesome cover, extremely expensive. I, I missed out on a claim for it on Elite Comics 11 like a year ago. And uh, then it was claimed by Golden Age Guru and he had it for sale and I was really tempted to buy it from him and I ended up not buying it and I'm regretting it. But uh, hopefully I find another copy sometime. One will pop up maybe on eBay and I can get it. But, uh, but then the next one is issue 214, which is actually my favorite cover from the entire run. Uh, it's this is actually I believe this is the same guy from issue 213 that he's now chased them onto their their spaceship you know this giant monster guy with a ray gun and uh, you can see here I just I think these are just so incredible because this is 1954 it, you know this is this is early on in the you know concept of going to space and all that and and they've got these just amazing covers these sci-fi covers I love that red planet because I really like red covers and it's got this really cool red planet so this is this is my favorite book of the entire run uh, it's 214 and you can see he he does his signature on these we've got that little signature block right there and this issue something that's interesting um, almost every single issue has this flaw it's it's and it's probably not really even technically a flaw I think it's a printer crease but it's just all of them. It doesn't matter how high a grade you see them, they all have some level of that flaw there, which I just have always thought was interesting. And then you may have seen me unbox this one uh, in, a, in another video. And this is my copy of issue 215, which is another underwater cover that I really like. I think this is a cool cover. And this one is a qualified. It's missing the centerfold, you can see. There, centerfold missing, effect story incomplete. So if you haven't seen this type of label before, you see that this one here is a blue label. This means that the book is complete. There's no restoration, you know, there's no signature or anything like that. Then you've got this one that's a green label, which means it's qualified, which means they are ignoring some flaw on the book and giving it the grade like that flaw isn't there. Because if this was given a blue label, which it could be, it would get a 0.5. It's missing the centerfold. It's incomplete. That, that's what it would get. Um, but they, this book presents well. It presents like a 3.5. So you're basically saying that you've got this book that looks like a 3.5, but it has this, this big flaw to it that would actually knock it down. You'll see this as well when, when you have books that maybe are really high grade, but they have a, a uh, popped staple. And so they could be like a 9.6, but it'll be a green label because it would really be like a 7.0 or a 6.0 with that pop staple. But you see, this is cool underwater cover. Again, he's uh, Buck Rogers is saving this woman and shooting this octopus. And so the octopus tentacle type covers are always real popular for Golden Age stuff. And uh, so I, I really like this cover too. And I think the, the green actually looks pretty sharp with the, the green label, so it doesn't bother me all that much. But if I could get a blue label, I definitely will. But this one is also... Uh, getting pretty expensive. Um, then the last issue in the run is 216. I'll, I'll put a picture of that one up there. That one, it, it doesn't really interest me all that much, so I'm not really excited to go after that book, but the, the two that I am really looking for are 210 and 213. Now, I mentioned that I would talk about the, the Grand Comics database uh, with this, and so I'll, sh I'll shoot the, the picture of it up there. And so that's where you can see that you can actually find the total page count for these books. Uh, because this is a golden age book this is from 1955 or 54 I believe this one's 54 and with golden age books you have to be careful they aren't always going to be the uh that standard um and you see it just just take the tape off don't worry about it <laughs> you know you can tape is cheap you can replace the tape uh and uh, but Golden Age books can have all kinds of random page counts. The, the standard 36 pages 
uh, that you see with Silver Age, with bronze, with modern books, is, is not standard in the Golden Age. Now, this book happens to be 36 pages, so uh, that's just you know the case with this one. And I'm going to uh, flip through it real quick, just make sure it's complete. And you can see, I mean, it's beat up pretty bad. You've got big tears and everything. It was advertised as a fair, you know, as a 1-0, and I would say that is a very accurate grade. But what I'll want to look for are things like color touch, because that'll still be frustrating, you know, if there's color touch on the cover. But I don't see anything that jumps out as like bleed through or anything like that. So I'm just going to count the pages. And so when you get to the center, you know, it's always you, you check the, the center fold, you look for the staples. Again, this book is solo grade. It, do, it doesn't matter if things are attached. It looks like it's attached. Staples do have a little rust on them, but again, it doesn't really matter. Okay, and, and so everything looks like it's here. You know, it, it has all 36 pages. I didn't see any cutouts, anything like that. There is this one page here. Uh, let's see if you can see it. That that has uh, a piece torn out of the um, out of the margin, but it doesn't get into the art. And so you can see, does not get into the to the art there. And so that's important, you know, to to me at least. I I don't want things to have the the art, you know, disrupted by by having a big chunk torn out or anything like that. Uh, there are also these little pieces on the corner there that are that are missing, but. For the most part, it's fine. You know, it was advertised as a one, and it's definitely a a one. I, I wouldn't, it, you know, there's always the possibility that it could get like a 1.5 or something like that. But you can see like how this one, there's not a lot of gloss or anything left on this book. Uh, it's the type of book that you can just send. That you could, if I if I want to get this graded, which I might, uh, I would probably just send it in. I, I probably wouldn't even bother really with pressing because it's not something that's going to improve anything on this book it, it is what it is and so save myself a little bit of money save myself some time um, without getting it pressed but still get that that book graded because there's not a lot of these out there you know there are very few copies of these books out there and so anytime you know I come across them and I can pick them up I, I definitely go for it this same seller had a copy of 214 as well, and I bid on that one, but that one went a little above what I wanted for it. Uh, I probably should have just gone for it and paid a little more, but it was also around the same grade. It was like a 1.5, something like that. Um, but for this one, I think I won it at $229 after shipping and taxes, it was like 250 And I mean, I would value this book around 600 bucks. And so to me, that was a great deal. You know, it was, uh, it's, a, it's just a, a rare book, Frank Frazetta, always happy to, to pick up a, a book like that. Now, I have one other Frazetta book that I don't have a lot of books from, from him, but uh, this is one that just if you're, if you're interested in other types of Frazetta artwork, another book that he is very famous for that he did uh, was Vampirella number no. one. And so this is not a, a high grade or anything. You can see it's got this little chip out here and a, a lot of little like spine damage, that kind of thing. But uh, this is another very famous uh, cover book that he's known for, First Appearance of Vampirella, and so just a, another, you know, cool book that I have. I, it's another one of those books I, I, I regret not buying one that was a little higher grade because they have gotten really, really expensive. Uh, artists like Frank Frazetta, uh, his work has gotten much pricier, and so it's harder to come by, and the, the key issues, you know, the books that people are really looking for are just, they're getting really expensive, but it's fun to look for them. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're, in the, if you're, you're hunting for these types of books, I mean, this is why I, I like to say they, they are out there. You know, this was an eBay auction that I picked it up in. Uh, you just gotta keep your eyes open and you can, you can find those, you know, those rare books, the, those, those really tough books to get. It's, if you don't worry too much about, <laughs> about the grade, you know, these are the types of books where any grade for me is, is good. Just having the copy of it is, is the first step and you can always try to get a nicer copy later on if you want, but just getting that copy is, is, a, is a big step in the process. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here if you'd like to click on some of my other videos and the subscription button right here if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video.